Welcome to building a covered deck here at chieftutor.com. Okay, so this is ultimately what we want to build. A covered deck with some exposed gable beams, as well as a deck that's open to above. So we're going to kind of do a open cover and covered deck on the back of a house. All right, so the client sent in, this is the house, and this is the model we're going to be starting with. So let's go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to go to the floor plan, and here I can have, I have the terrain and the basic house. <coughs> and now I want to build um, a deck. Okay, so I'm going to use the regular deck railing tool. Now the client wants it to start about 15 feet off the corner of the house there. So I got a little marker that I've already made. So we're going to come out about, oh, let's come out about 20 feet. I'm just kind of left click and drag and I'm just drawing uh, using the railing tool, three sided railing tool. Okay, so our three sides to our railing. So now if we go back to the 3D view, we'll see that Chief has made a nice little railing deck and it's even made a deck. Now if yours doesn't show columns and pillars, simply double click into the area and make sure it's addressed as a deck. It might have been addressed as a balcony. If it's a balcony, of course, it builds it something similar to this. So again, just double click into it and make sure that it's a deck, not a dining room. Let's try to get it right there, Dave. And there we go. You have the post columns, the whole nine yards. Okay, so let's go back to the plan view. Now, Chief has these great little steps that they use, these stair railing tools that they have. They have this one called click stairs, which means if you have the train set to the height you want and you have the house set to the height, you want you can use click stairs to basically generate what you want from the deck down to the terrain by just left clicking one time so I went to the end of my deck kind of centered it with my doors and left clicked one time and basically what I mean is it finds the deck it finds the terrain and builds the set of stairs and I'm gonna double click this bad boy and I'm gonna go into its specifications and I'm gonna make its width like 10 feet wide that's pretty huge. Yeah, that's pretty good. <coughs> okay, so there's my designation. Now I want to also, <coughs> excuse me, I want to make um, the covered part of the deck about 20 feet. So since I don't have a 20 foot marker, I'm going to build one. I'm going to use this point to point dimension. And I'm going to start in from the outside of this deck. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to randomly try to get to 20 feet. Doesn't mean if you get it exactly. You can simply select the marker with your cursor tap on the dimension, type in 20 feet to be exact, and there's our line. There's our line of what we're going to end our deck with, and I can use a CAD line to mark it if I wanted to. But actually, I'm going to mark it with an invisible wall. So I'm going to use invisible or room divider wall, they call it now. They used to call this invisible wall, now it's room divider wall. Starting on that mark, I'm going to go straight back there, and then I'm going to grab this wall and go straight forward here. And now I have two sections of deck, really. So if I roll out, I can select this section. I can select this section. There's two totally separate selections for the deck. So there it is. Now let's pull the roof forward. So luckily with this client, he already has a gable roof at the end of his, uh, in the middle of his house where he wants to basically pull it out and cover it. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab it and pull it out. And we'll notice, look what's happening, is the roof pitch is going down through the ground. It's making a large run all the way down there. there. So let's uh, do a little split screen action. So we can kind of see what's happening with the plan, as well as see it in 3D. So I'm going to come back here to the plan view, and I'm going to select the roof I want to manipulate. And I want to cut it right there. So I'm going to use the 3 tool on my keyboard. And I'm going to cut it right there by left clicking right at that point. And I've cut the roof plane. So now it's giving me a grab handles here and here. So I could take this grab handle and I could pull it back to there. Thereby giving me a nice straight line. See how that worked? Okay, let's do the same for this. Let's grab it, pull it out. We'll attach it to this one. I'm going to hit three on the keyboard, touch it right there. Grab this corner and bring him in. Try to straighten it all up. Looks good. Now, I don't want the overhang to be so dramatic, so I'm going to go back to about there. Grab this side, go back to about there. Now, there's a couple things we can do for post beam. Chief has this railing tool, which is nice, and I can go and click it in the 3D, open it up. Let's go to our railing specifications. You'll notice as you play with Chief's railing, they have all kinds of fun stuff. There's post to beam, and it creates a beam going across and gives me post as well. So I have the whole nine yards. If we get in there, we can kind of take a look <clears throat> at what's happening there. So that's one way to do it. 
If you need to get it specific sizes, you can manipulate that in that same uh, directory or that same uh, railing specifications. You can go down <coughs> and make this every eight feet to a post. You can make it maybe 10 feet or 20 feet or whatever. Um, I can go back to this guy and I could just say post to rail, like say post to beam, post to ceiling, uh, half post at the wall not to show up, you know, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep with basic railing and I want to go back here to newels and styles and I'm going to make this more like a thousand thousand inches on center so I don't have any other dividers it just goes straight through there's no pieces coming down to, to hit the ground click OK and that's kind of what I want for all the way around so what I could do is select this one that I've already manipulated and made the way I wanted oh well let's you know what before we change it let's also grab this color and apply it to the rails as well there we go so this side of the railing is exactly what I want so I'm gonna grab that side that I like and I'm just gonna trace right over again the old ones and thereby killing out the old ones and bringing the new ones to the right color the right size and everything looks good for me okay it even kept the stair opening and everything was great let's just keep doing something on that stair here shall we go here and say open underneath and open risers we can remove makes it a little bit better solid goes all the way through Okay, great. Now let's put in some col our own custom columns and our own custom beams. So I'm going to get rid of this view for now. <clears throat> and we're going to make our own custom columns and beams, much like the picture that I was showing you. Let's see if we can get that back up and going. Because the client wanted a stone column on the base, and then for the ones that go up to have a wood column above it. He wants these wood columns to be 12 by 12, and so these would be a little thicker, of course, because they're the base. So I'm going to make these stone columns first, and then this second. So let's do that. Let's start with the big base unit, which I'm going to use as a CAD tool, the square box. I'm going to square it out, and I'm going to pick a size. Let's make it 2 feet by 2 feet. And again, if we make it too big, we can always change it later. No big thing. I'm going to go over here to this tool, Convert to Polyline, and I'm going to convert it to a countertop. And I'm going to make the countertop's height, I don't know, 72? I'm just guessing now, and 72. Another thing I want to do is go into the Moldings tab, click Add New, because I want to cap it with a nice little cap on the top. So I'm going to say um, Edge Molding. I don't know, something like that. Pull this down so I can get inside the screen. Say, OK, OK, OK. OK, OK, OK. Oh, you know, one thing I should have done is on that molding, let's make it a little bigger. Let's make it three high and two wide. OK. And then I'm going to stick it right in the corner of my plan. Let's go to the 3D view. <coughs> And we can kind of take a look at what it's done. Now, it's building off of zero, but my terrain that I've already set is 34 inches below zero. So I simply double-click this bad boy and say I still want it to be 72 high, but I want the elevation to be negative 34, right, because we want to go down. We also want to make sure it's above the railing, so we might want to make it higher than 72. We can make it 76. Oh, and of course, we want to change this, negative 34. There we go. Then we want to pick a nice little stone color for it. So we're going to go in here, and let's pick a nice stone, shall we? And picking stone's fun, if you have stone. If you don't, go on over to chieftutor.com and download some. You're already at chieftutor.com, just download some. You'll find it in my symbols section. Okay, so there we go. So we got a nice big column the way we want. We're going to also want to run a skirt around the around the deck itself so we can cover up those posts. So let's keep going. We got this built. I like the way it came together. Put the center point right about there. And now I'm going to use another tool to build the 12 by 12s, the post. So we're going to move it out to a foot and move this out to a foot and convert it. Why don't we make this one a slab? Well, there's no real reason to make it countertop or slab or any other thing. So whatever makes you happy. I'm going to make this 300. 
and elevation top um, uh, um, 60, something so it's sticking up, so I can see it. There it is. And then I'm going to grab a wood color to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go up here to the cork catalogs and materials under wood, uh, alder, rustic alder. That sounds good. I'll plant that sucker right there. So now I need this guy kind of in the middle of this guy. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Select them both together and I can block them and make them a CAD block or an actual architectural block which keeps them together. So I'm just going to make them an architectural block for now. And I'm going to copy and paste in place the exact same thing and I'm going to push him over there. And before I make too many of them I want to get the right size. So I'm going to unblock that and unblock that and pull this guy up. And let's pull that guy up as well. Now, we obviously don't need to go that far in there, so I can even grab the bottom and raise it up a bit. Something like that. Now we want to get exact, okay? So we're going to use a cross-section elevation and cross-section elevation like this. And we're going to bring it right to the height we want it to be. And we're going to say right about, right about there. And I can even bring this one up to right about there. And again, I can line it up by just moving my cursor over to kind of eyeball it there. And bring this one up as well. And so now you can see that I'm starting to take shape with building my columns, right? And now we need to build a beam going across and a beam going up. Well, we do that in the elevation cross-section view. Now, this is the wrong view. I, that's looking out. I'd rather have the view looking in. So I'm going to look in like this. And I'm going to select this one and this one. And I'm going to copy and paste in place these two items. And I'm going to put the other one right about there. And then get it a little closer. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Copy and paste in place. So it gives me a copy and puts it right in the place of the other one. And I'm going to put it down there like so. And bringing it in where it lines up to that one right about there. Okay. So now I need a beam going across, so let's do that. We're going to use a polyline solid. We're going to come in here just off the top of this one, and we'll start making our polyline solid. I'm going to make it right about here. And I can zoom in and get exact, because that always helps. Um, double click it, and it's only one thick now. I'm going to make this like an 8x8 eight eight post. There we go. Zoom out a bit more. Post, column, beam, whatever. Okay, pull that one in. Notice these guys are a little shy. I can also pick up the color, apply it to there. There we go. Make sure this guy's good. He's right on the money. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make another beam using my polyline solid. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to make it about 8 inches. And I'm going to center this bad boy up right on my roof, like that. I'm going to bring him down to touch that one. Double click him, make sure he's 8 as well. Again, I can pick the color, and apply it over. And now, what I want to do is take this one, copy and paste in place the exact same thing, and I'm going to make it at an angle, like say, like that. And then I'm going to use my point to point, and I'm going to move the middle point of this guy to the middle point of this beam here. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Copy and paste in place that guy. And now I'm going to tilt this guy out. And I'm going to do that point to point move to put him where I want it. Right there. Now I'm going to select all three of these beams. And I want these three beams that I've made. Whoops. Actually, I need to make this eight. Yep. Yeah, it's all the same size, same width. I'm going to pull this guy back to here and pull this guy back to here. Okay, now I'm going to select all three beams that I've made, and I'm going to make them just one beam. Combine them all into one piece. So I'm going to hit this, and it's going to say, a new polyline has been built. Do you want to keep the originals? No, delete the originals. Now I have just one beam. If I go back to my floor plan, I could try to find my beam, which I have the flat one that I built here, which I can pull out. I'm just going to control drag it right to about the middle of those posts. And then I'm looking for my other beam. I don't see it here, so go up and check your attic level, because sometimes they build things on the attic level, and there it is. 
and I'm going to copy it and go down to the first level and I'm going to control V which is paste and I'll paste it right here and I'm going to control drag this one as well right on top of the other one trying to keep the center line lined up with my roof that's above. I'm going to go back to my attic level and make sure I delete the original one so it doesn't get confused. And let's go to a 3D camera. And we can see this start to take shape on how to build these columns. Now I just need to paste these columns to go around the sides and voila, I'm done. So this has been messing with deck tools, I guess you could say, as well as um, gable beams, exposed gable beams here at chieftutor.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Hope you learned something new. Did you learn something new? Am I rambling on? This is a long video. This took me a good 16 minutes. 16. That's a lot. It's crazy.